Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Churn. And my name is Patrick Ferry. And guys, welcome to our show. So it's great to be back this week. And Pat, how are you feeling? I'm pretty good, Austin. I mean, I can't complain. There's there's soccer on almost 24-7, it feels like. Uh, you know, whether it's MLS is back, um, you know, we have these these transfers, and then we have um, European soccer in England kind of closing out here and, and some relegation promotion playoffs. There's a lot going on right now. Yeah, that's that's very true. You know, we got a, a short off season as well, so hopefully, you know, we'll get to – get to enjoy a lot of soccer for the the next few months and uh yeah i i think uh it'll be interesting to see some of these american players and where they go it sounds like you know we got a lot of uh transfer rumors swirling yeah that's right austin um it, it's so intriguing because you have these transfer rumors but at the same time they're finishing the seasons at their clubs and then immediately joining other teams so it'll be kind of funny to see how that all unfolds yeah that's a good point so today we want to talk about an American in England finishing the season strong and helping his team qualify for the Champions League. An American uh, winger um, training uh, with Messi in the Barca first team. And finally, like we just talked about, we got a lot of transfer rumors to cover. So uh, make sure you stay around for that. And uh, yeah, Pat, let's get to our episode. All right, guys. And the first player we're going to talk about here on this episode is Christian Pulisic. Um, over at Chelsea. So to finish off the season, Austin, it was a fantastic 2-0 win. Uh, Christian started, played 78 minutes there. I think Hudson Adoy uh, came on for him. But uh, nonetheless, the really hard-earned chef uh, made an impact there. But also, you could see throughout the game that Pulisic was covered pretty heavily. Um, the Wolves players were, were definitely alert in targeting him where he was on the field. Uh, similar to almost the hazard experience where some fouls here and there, but multiple people on him during the game. So I think that's foreshadowing what's to come as people have seen the impact he's made uh, when healthy and returning from injury. So I think overall, Austin, 10 goals and 10 assists uh, throughout all competitions. Um, I think it was nine goals, six assists in the Premier League, uh, but not too bad for a player who missed a good chunk due to injury. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, he definitely came on hot uh, after the restart of the, the Premier League season. And uh, like you said, Pat, you know, it wasn't his best game this weekend uh, against Wolves, but he definitely made a big impact. You know, that that second goal that I believe Olivier Giroud scored uh, really just came off of a nice kind of, um, how would you put it? I guess him and a defender kind of collided and he was able to get a, a pass away to uh, Mason Mount to kind of, right. you know, jump start that goal. So, uh, you know, even like I said, not on his best day, he was able to kind of affect play and, uh, you know, help Chelsea secure that win. And uh, what a crucial win, Pat, that that helps secure them, uh, I guess, the shot at Champions League. They still have to qualify through the, the opening rounds. But, uh, yeah, that's big for Chelsea, especially since yeah, awesome. young players. It's huge. It's huge. I mean, like with uh, even you could see Mount, um, Pool Six, some of these other players coming in and a very young uh, an experienced team per se had some veterans in the mix, but uh, uh, even with some issues in the back, uh, they were still able to with Lampard uh, at the helm have a, had a pretty successful season. I think really setting up uh, with some of those other transfers, um, you know, that we've mentioned in the past episode um, to really be poised to make a, a bigger push um, in the Premier League and the Champions League. I think it'll be kind of interesting to see the dynamic team and that all unfolds. Um, I know. Pool of six sometimes likes to cut in centrally, um, you know, or he's out wide, but uh, with Mount there, it's kind of interesting to see how everything will unfold with uh, you know, the other players now now joining the team. Um, I always pronounce his name wrong, but Zayet, right? Zayek? Yeah, I think uh, Ziyech. Ziyech? Yeah, I didn't have that right at all. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and then even uh, I think Havertz is still rumored, but, uh, you know, looking pretty promising not going to guarantee but um you could just see chelsea is really stacking up where i still think they need a little help the back but it is nice to see them uh, bolstering their attack 
Yeah, it'll definitely give them um, a lot of options and it'll definitely make, you know, playing time hard to come by for, for Christian. I think, uh, and, and I don't mean hard to come by uh, in the sense of he's not going to play, but I think just, you know, he's going to have to really fight for his minutes. Um, you know, this year he did a great job of that because uh, definitely at the beginning of the season, he was kind of out of favor, so to speak, or at least out of Frank Lampard's plans. So, uh, you know, going up against some of those players you mentioned, like uh, Ziyech and, and Werner, uh, who also can play on the wing, I think that's only going to help raise his game even more. And, uh, you know, that, that'll be going into, well, I guess we're still a, a good, what, year and a half away from the World Cup. So hopefully he can kind of right. rise into the best form of his life and, uh, you know, help us, I guess, qualify for the World Cup. That'll be the big thing going on next year. And, uh, yeah, yeah, he still has, you know, one more game, one more uh, important game this year, Pat, too, right? I guess two that's more. Right. That's right, Austin, against, uh, that's right, two more. I guess the one really uh, referring to is the FA Cup final against, uh, you know, a team that you've, I know you've supported, um, you know, Arsenal. So it'll be kind of interesting to see how that unfolds. And be nice to see uh, Christian lift some silver away. Yeah, that would be, that would definitely be the dream. That would be a, a dream ending to to the season that he's had or, you know, first season in the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can uh, cover that next week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then I know that they're, uh, game, right? <laughs> you touched on that. They have a, a bit of a hole against Bayern, um, upcoming Champions League. So again, like I mentioned, the season's a little crazy. The Premier League ending, and then Champions League from this season resuming, but then the next season coming. It's it's a bit of a cluster, but nonetheless, a lot of uh, opportunity for uh, Pulisic to, like you mentioned, just elevate his game. Maybe he can have a uh, almost like that comeback he had close against Liverpool, but uh, you know fully deliver a, a historic uh, potential prediction against Bayern Munich here, Austin. Yeah, that would be, that would definitely be the icing on the uh, season. Um, so yeah, I think that's all for, for our episode, or, you know, for episode on Christian Pulisic today, our, our, our portion on Christian Pulisic. So now we'll go over to Italy and talk about Andrea Novakovic. So Andrea Pat uh, played 67 minutes and got an assist in, uh, in, uh, excuse me, Frosinone's 3-2 loss to Benevento. Um, so in this game, you know, Andrea had a very, very good assist. Um, I'm hoping we can we can show the video on our episode here, um, and it's not copyrighted. But basically, he weaved through, I think it was like three players, and uh, had a really nice, uh, you know, stop at the end that that made a defender slide and, uh, you know, squared the ball to a teammate. It's like a Messi-esque goal. assist or something. <laughs> yeah, it was really uh, yeah, it. It was cool. Yeah, it was, it was a great assist. So... Uh, you know, after that game, uh, Frosinone played again on Monday, um, and Andrea played 84 minutes in a 1-0 loss. So, unfortunately, this puts Frosinone now in eighth place in Serie B. So, uh, eighth place is actually still good for the promotion playoffs. Um, they have a, a six-team playoff. So, uh, we'll see if, you know, Andrea will be playing in Serie A next, next year in the coming weeks. But, um, you know, overall, Pat, looking at his season, um, you know, he's played a little over 2,000 minutes. And uh, in Serie B alone, he scored four goals and had eight assists. So, you know, I think he, he kind of started off the season a little bit slow, was was finding playing time hard to come by, but he's really been been killing it ever since the restart. Um, and, and I think, you know, going into the season, we didn't really expect him to have, um, you know, eight assists. I think we expected him to have yeah. goals. Um, but, you know, I think that's that's a good first season for him in Italy, which – you know, has been a, a, you know, a country and a league, you know, obviously Serie A more prominently, but, but a league that's been kind of harsh to Americans. Um, so I think that's, you know, a good starting spot for him going forward. Yeah. And the eye popping stats too, as you mentioned, assist uh, so high is um, because, you, you know, we saw him in person, obviously it's just one game with the, the national team, but um, just watching some of the highlights too, um, you know, back uh, throughout his his European journey, I guess you could say, um, you know, until he landed in Italy, where uh, he, he, you know, he didn't necessarily have that su- very strong tactical ability where, you know, he's able to generate assists more, kind of that hold-up play, you know, he's a big target, able to, you know, have some dynamic shots and, uh, you know, big frame in the box. But it's really nice to see him kind of elevating his game and his vision, um, which is another important piece that, uh, sometimes goes under the radar for strikers and and different um, setups and systems 
Um, again, not the best comparison and I'm not just saying because I'm biased, but maybe Firmino doesn't get all the credit where, uh, you know, he's able to, with his vision and, and trickery, uh, set up a lot of other players on his teams that have higher uh, productivity in terms of goals. But uh, someone like, Delo, uh, excuse me, <laughs> get ahead of myself, or Novakovic, Austin, I mean, um, showing that side of his game, I think could be, you know, really great for a club and country. Yeah, and we, we, you know, we've seen that, or we've seen that, excuse me, at, at Citard and also um, at Telstar back in the day. He was, he was very good at setting up teammates, um, you know, whether that's using his head and, uh, you know, getting on top of crosses to kind of nod down into the path of teammates or just, you know, like you saw in this, this past game against Benevento, kind of, uh, you know, skillfully working his way through players in the box. Um, I think that's something that, uh, you know, rather inconsistent, but it's something that we've seen from from Andrea in the past. And uh, yeah, definitely something that brings kind of a little bit, uh, you know, different of a, a play style to that striker position in our in our pool. So, you know, I don't know if he's he's really in the consideration at the moment for um, a striker with the men's national team. I know, you know, looking at our options, Pat, we really don't have too many. Uh, so I think, you know, anybody who's who's, you know, scoring four goals and providing eight assists in a in a European league, albeit not, you know, the top league in that nation, um, I think should be, should be in the running. I, I kind of look at him kind of like Julian Green in that, you know, he's someone that would probably be in like the top 40 players um, in the, in the men's national team pool, in my opinion, or at least, you know, the top 50, um, which means that they should be in that consideration every time for a call up um, depending on, you know, their recent form. So uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to really add, Pat. I know, uh, Frosinone have one more game and then hopefully the uh, the promotion playoffs. So, you know, we'll see how much longer Andrea gets to play this season and, uh, you know, where he ends. Yeah, I think uh, they'll be kind of interesting monitors. So, I mean, we're rooting for Andrea and uh, I'll try to find a stream to, to those games, Austin, coming up. So uh, heading over and shifting over to Spain, I should say, uh, we're going to talk about um, that exciting player who got to train with Messi recently, and that's uh, Conrad de la Fuente. Um, so, you know, Conrad's had a very interesting uh, year and, and kind of a, a slow grind, but a, a great rise um, throughout the La Masia Academy here. Or in recent game, unfortunately, um, they did fall Barca B 2-1 to one in Sabado. It's a pretty crucial game to get into that uh, Segunda division, so they will stay in the third tier instead of uh, heading up to that second um, division. But nonetheless, um, awesome. Conrad has really had impressive you know, stats and being able to rise to the challenge. I know we, we talked about a few episodes back, um, some contract situations, some other, I believe Hertha was th uh, thrown in the mix there. And uh, there's a lot of speculation, uncertainty. So it's really great to see Conrad. Um, I think it was, it was the U19s, he had four goals, um, you know, a few assists there. And then with Barca B now, um, just five games, he's three goals and an assist. Uh, so you can really see him making an impact as he's risen up. Yeah, and they were they were very close. They had to go through uh, basically three rounds, and I'm not exactly sure how it works there in that in that third tier. But um, you know this this game that they lost unfortunately on Sunday was kind of that last game um, that they needed to win to get to you know the second division there. So uh, you know while they came up just short, um, I think it was a pretty pretty huge uh, feat for them to get that far. And, and, you know, Conrad, like you said, played a big part in, in them even getting to that last promotion game. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's a precursor for what we'll see next year. Um, obviously them staying in the the third division and it seems like, you know, Conrad's a, a full B team player right now and it doesn't seem like he's going to go on loan, or at least that's not really what the talk is right now. So you know, hopefully you can keep that that level of play up and, uh, yeah, continue to, to score goals and stand out and continue to yeah. change. <laughs> yeah, you never know, Austin. Um, you know, there, there there's some doubters there, but we, we're believers, and especially those young yas. And, and if, if Conrad, I think the goal needs to be, you know, getting that spring spot, Barcelona will be the whole year, um, producing, you know, goals and assists and just really shining there, uh, taking his chances to get visibility not only to the first team, but maybe some other suitors too. Um, you know, not ruling out uh, Barca first team, but also, you know, have to keep the options open. And I know we've talked about it before, but maybe some other strong 
uh, La Liga teams or, or teams pushing uh, from the Segunda division. So um, I think this year really needs to be focused Barca B. And then the following year after that, um, you know, it needs to be that timeline where he needs to progress because he'll be in that 20 to 21 uh, age range. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, Barca B this upcoming year will be, um, you know, a satisfactory level. Obviously, it would have been great to see them get promoted to the 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 second division and kind of get that, that experience right away next year. But, uh, you know, there is an error that comes with playing for Barca B. Um, you know, Barca have a lot of good players in their academy, so it's not like he's going to be playing with um, – you know, kind of true academy players. This is a team comprised of, you know, top level prospects. Basically, Ansu Fati played with this team. Ricky Puig played with this team early in the season. So, um, you know, if he can be in and around those type of players on a consistent basis and kind of be uh, at least getting the visibility of those players, I think that's, you know, that's fine for him this year. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more, Austin. I think uh, just to the points that you made uh, quickly, just to harp on that. Um, it is historic academy, and he's had a, you know we've we've covered his his rise, um, you know UEFA youth leagues all the way up here, and um, yeah, I mean he, I think he just needs to refine again the final third. He has some trickery, but um, also needs to, I guess, in a way maybe add some more skills and then hone on um, different different sets in terms of maybe taking on players one on one. Sometimes can be a little predictable. Um, but at the same time, right. I think he's a dynamic enough player where he can break out of that um, those predictable moments and kind of add some different flair. We're able to see at least um, from the B team, uh, Barca B, excuse me, um, perspective where he's had some some pretty clever assists there. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. So that's it for uh, this part of episode today. Now we're going to go talk about some uh, some more exciting transfer rumors. So last episode, we had a lot of uh, exciting transfer rumors for you guys. And, uh, you know, this episode, we have even more. So uh, let's start right away. We got uh, Josh Sargent. So there's a rumor floating out there, Pat. Not exactly sure the validity of it. I think it came from a a transfer market article. So, um, you know, maybe take it with a grain of salt. But it's still interesting nonetheless. And that's with, um, you know, a loan move for him. Um, So basically, there's been a... um, you know, talk out there that uh, yeah, Red Bull Salzburg is looking at loaning Josh Sargent in for the season. So obviously there's a direct American link with Jesse Marsh, who coaches there. Um, but Pat, you know, is this kind of a, an exciting move that you'd want to see happen? It's an interesting question, Austin. I think, uh, you know, I told you this uh, earlier, but I'm, I'm kind of uh, carefully optimistic, I guess you could say, where um, – Maybe we've seen some uh, other Americans in the past go to different situations. But, uh, yeah, I think I think it depends on a lot of factors in terms of the the system. Um, you know, obviously having an American connection, American connection, excuse me, would be great. And then playing uh, for a team that maybe um, possesses more and dominates more in their domestic league, I think would be a, a huge help from in those regards. But what are your thoughts? Yeah, you, that's a great point. I think that's the biggest thing that, um, you know, going to, to Salzburg would do for him is just getting in a team with with some really good talent um, and getting more opportunities. Because that's the thing we saw at Bremen this year where, you know, it was just brutal to play. You're, Two shots uh, a game. <laughs> yeah, he would, he would hardly ever shoot the ball. And, um, you know, when he did find those moments, it was just like, oh, my goodness, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually in the box open. Like, what do I do now? So, yeah, I think that's that's an interesting um, slant on it. You know, obviously the the level of competition is a little bit lower, um, but I think you know confidence is what Josh needs. So I think that would be uh, something you, you know he should find at, at Salzburg if he did go there. The other slant I had too is just you know putting that 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 type of move into perspective. So um, you know Salzburg obviously lost Erling Holland this year, and uh, you know Huang. Ki Chan, I believe, Chang, um, you know, the striker that just went to Leipzig. Um, so they lost some strikers, but they still have two very good ones in Pat Sandaka and uh, Kareem Adeyemi, which is a very young um, German international player who's, who's you know, going to be the next big striker. Um, so I think, you know, playing time or, and, and, you know, getting that experience in a, in a lower league, but in a better team, uh, might sound enticing, but I don't think he'd be the instant starter on that team, um, which is, 
you know, maybe not what you're expecting if you're a player, uh, you know, playing consistent minutes in the Bundesliga. So I think that would be something that that kind of could make this move um, a little less attractive. But yeah, but overall, you know, Bremen are just I, I don't know. There's something about Bremen that that doesn't give me confidence, um, you know, for this upcoming season, even though they stayed in the Bundesliga. I think that's, yeah. that's great. But yeah. I don't I think it kind of almost reminds me of Hanover, kind of nervy situation where, you know, you're kind of clinging on, you, you survive here and there, but I don't know, Hassan, I don't want to, I don't want to say and just, uh, you know, write off a sinking ship, but um, yeah, I, I would really like, you said, for Josh to be in, in a great situation where um, maybe not all that weight is instantly on his shoulder and he can kind of really uh, learn and develop and, you know, have more of those chances. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So we'll see what happens. You know, I, I, I think it would be tough for Bremen to let him go on loan. Um, you know, like we just alluded to, he's he's one of their best prospects. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. But I know Pat, you got another player we're excited about, and one that we really haven't covered much, just because he doesn't really play in Europe yet. But he that's could. That's right, Austin, and that's uh, you know the Philly, um, you know, local near near uh, you know our old uh, stomp grounds there, and that's a. Uh, Brendan Aronson with the Philadelphia Union. Uh, you know, the 19-year-old has uh, truly had a, a great start to his career, you know, coming through that, that homegrown sign all the way up and, and having a really great year. I think it was 25 starts last year he had. Um, and then obviously uh, with the MS's back portion, um, you know, Philly has, especially since the time that I've supported it when we were inaugural uh, season there, has just, you know, rose to another level, which is great to see them actually um, you know, winning and succeeding, but nonetheless, Austin back to Aronson. I mean, um, I think even, uh, uh, Curtin, the coach highlighted some really, uh, key points to him and, and what they're happy with his development and some of those rumors as to why maybe he's being linked to Europe. Um, especially a lot of those German teams, Austin, uh, in the Bundesliga where it's Freiburg, uh, Frankfurt, Mönchengladbach, uh, Hoffenheim. I think even over in Scotland, Celtic in some unnamed Belgian teams have been interested. So, I guess, uh, you know, before getting into, you know, why I think he's, you know, a great call, um, excuse me, just his skills and his, and his technical abilities. Uh, what are your thoughts, I guess, on some of those teams? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I think, um, you know, he's someone who's, who's very, um, very much of the creator. Um, so I think, you know, like we've talked about in the past with Freiburg, Freiburg's a very defensive minded team. Um, it's a team that, that really kind of, prides itself on on physical play so to speak and and, and kind of just you know I, I kind of liken them to the Burnley of the Bundesliga um so I, I'm not a huge fan of that one Hoffenheim's interesting um you know they're in a weird state right now to kind of try and find trying to find a new identity since Nagelsmann has left um so the team I kind of like out of those ones um is Eintracht Frankfurt honestly um, I think they've got some holes right now at the moment. And, um, you know, they're a team that that's had recent success. Um, but, you know, as a team that, that, like I said, you know, could use someone like Aronson to kind of, uh, you know, kickstart them again. They didn't have the best season this year, uh, but they still kind of have that air of a, of a good Bundesliga team. So I don't know. That's my pick. Do you want to go into maybe why, uh, you know, Aronson makes sense yeah. to Bundesliga? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, you know that's a really good pick, and and kind of the same concerns I had about some of the other teams that you mentioned. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into all the Freiburg and all that, but yeah, I mean, Austin, that just just the way that you've seen him grow, and again, he doesn't have necessarily eye popping stats like 12 goals, 15 assists, and um, you know, things like that, but he has really just made the union click, and, and really thrives in kind of that, um, you know, almost almost well, not the very much a high, almost high pressing uh, system in a way um, where he is able to kind of, you know, have the ball um, press full speed quickly. Um, he's a really hard worker, kind of that uh, kind of American mentality, I guess you could say, but um, mm -hmm. the things that he's really been improving on. And I think what could be the next step is, um, you know, really just kind of, you know, working on that final third and some of those decisions and, and making a, a bigger impact in that way. Um, you know, he, you know, getting the, those shots and, and assists in and, um, and he really good on the ball, um, you know, a great midfielder and kind of home control of the game um, and kind of orchestrate almost in a way. 
Um, so I think that's maybe some of the reasons why clubs are looking at him. But again, I think he's still a very much raw talent that, um, you know, with some revisions and refining, um, could be a huge star. Yeah, I was going to say the one talent I really like of him um, and think, you know, it makes the most sense for him to go to Europe because of the skill is is just his ability to find pockets of space off the ball. Yeah, um, Really good at just, you know, finding those open areas and then, uh, you know, having uh, or I guess putting himself in a good position to receive passes and kind of, um, you know, pass the ball along, so to speak, and, and kind of connect play in that in that final third. Um, like you said, it doesn't lead to many goals and assists, but um, I think he's just been so key in kind of helping the union possess the ball in those um, dangerous areas. And then just, you know, they've had some some good uh, striker play from Casper uh, Prisbalco and, um, you know, even Sergio Santos uh, has gotten into right. the action a bit too. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of been key for him. So I think, you know, those qualities will definitely help him, help him thrive in a league like the Bundesliga. I think that would be big. Yeah. It's going to quickly add, couldn't have said it any better. Austin, I know him and um, I think Mackenzie, too, are, are both uh, right. contracted in 2022. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting okay. with the two homegrown and kind of see how the situation goes with some of these rumors. Uh, you know, we'll have to monitor it. Yeah, Mackenzie's an interesting one, too, because I've heard Celtic, I think Taylor Tolman said it on one of the broadcasts. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, we love our Scottish Yankees. So we love that's, right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Some more players go to, to Scotland. But, yeah, so I think we'll move on to um, a player playing in England right now, and that would be Owen Adesawi. So Owen this week was linked to um, several championship teams and also a League One club. So um, the championship teams are Coventry City, who just got promoted, um, you know, this year and will play in the championship next year. Then you got Birmingham City, the club that, you know, Jude Bellingham just, just left and went to Dortmund for. And then uh, Lutton Town, so Cameron Carter-Vickers, current club, and Peterborough of League One. So, uh, yeah, you know, first impressions of, of this rumor, um, these are obviously loan moves for, for the, the Wolverhampton Wanderers, uh, defender, center defensive mid, whatever you want to call them. Um, so, I, you know, I think these are teams obviously at the, the lower end of the championship. So, to be honest with you, I was a little surprised, Pat, that um, – you know, these were the teams he was getting linked with, especially since we've heard other rumors before he signed that that Wolverhampton contract of, uh, you know, PSG reportedly being interested right, right. in several other high quality clubs. I think Arsenal was in the, the mix, too. So that was a little surprising. Um, obviously, I understand, you know, he's got to get playing time because it seems like Wolves play pre pretty much the same starting 11 every game. Um, so, you know, playing time is not necessarily going to be easy to get next year in that team but uh you know what are your thoughts on on these clubs and and kind of the stature of them yeah it, it's interesting because um like we've covered with uh, a lot of the players kind of in that uh the cha championship me, realm where uh you know with clubs that uh maybe struggling to survive or uh difficult situations where you know things are looking uh too good in terms of maybe getting bombarded by the the opposing team um you know maybe that's that's a lot of experience there but right in terms of maybe the psychological or confidence uh, side and and being with teams towards the bottom you know that's that's a grind and that's tough so um again not to not saying that Adesawi couldn't handle that but like you said i'm surprised he wouldn't be linked with uh maybe clubs that have a little more aspirations towards the middle of the top they're trying to make a, a bigger push yeah, like a team that really jumps out to me, and maybe they'll get promoted, but we'll see. Is like uh, Swansea City, or like, yeah. uh, you know, I'm trying to think of some of those mid table clubs, you know. Um, yeah, it just seems like there's more teams in that league that, uh, you know, I feel like he could really do something for, you know. If, if he can get consistent playing time at a team like, you know, Lutton Town, where we saw Cameron Carter Vickers, you know, become an instant starter for them, then, uh, yeah, maybe that's, you know, good for him and, and, and you know, he'll help that team kind of stay in the, the championship and maybe even, you know, push higher than their weight. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, he could also play as a, a midfielder too. I was, I think I was said to you off air, Pat, that maybe he's the uh, next Jude Bellingham replacement for, uh, for Birmingham City. But 
that's such a such a safe bet. But uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, right. He just can't wear the number twenty two. Apparently, that's uh, that's retired, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, so that's it for for Owen. I think you got one more player, Pat. And who would that be? Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Um, you know, kind of uh, polarizing uh, to many uh, fans. Uh, but that is Gianluca Busio. So again, uh, Gianluca is very interesting as he's had, he's such a young uh, dynamic player that kind of came on the scene really early, uh, riding with the, uh, the clubs, uh, excuse me, national team, youth teams, you know, all the way up to, uh, you know, sporting KC here where, you know, he's had made quite an impact. And uh, what's interesting about him is, um, you know, some of the clubs that he's been linked to Austin where it's, uh, some Dutch clubs like uh, PSV, Feyenoord, and then uh, over in Italy, uh, Fiorentina and Juventus, where um, uh, just all all intriguing. Where um, again, Gianluca is a very exciting player. I think a young player that still has a lot to a lot of room to grow and improve. But uh, very interesting in terms of his. Uh, some people could argue that he's maybe not as dynamic as a number 10, but also needs to kind of improve in the final third there and doesn't have maybe that, that uh, those clinical moments or that vision that you need to have. Um, but nonetheless, he has um, you know, made an impact at, at KC, whether starting or coming off the bench there um, you know, throughout his time. Um, being in the right moments, I think you mentioned too, but I want to get your thoughts on uh, some of these, these links. Yeah, and, and and first to kind of go off of your point, that's kind of the biggest thing with John Luca is we don't really know where he's best, you know, to be played at. Um, you know, like you said, he's he's not quick enough to really be a winger or kind of that that like forward thinking ten. Um, but he's not strong enough and and you know just physically dominant to be kind of a a center mid or more of like a box to box eight. So yeah, I think it's it's just tough. He's kind of caught in that that tweener stage where. Um, you know, maybe he'll grow into his body a little bit more and, um, you know, can kind of stand up to the physicality of, of midfield, but yeah, it's, it's really tough. He's got good technique, um, you know, good ball skills for the most part, but, uh, yeah, like you said, he doesn't, doesn't really do much, much finishing. You know, he had a good season last year, I'd say coming off the bench and, and, um, you know, kind of finding the right, you know, the right space at the right time to score goals, but, um, historically he's never really been a goal scorer. So yeah, I don't know. And, and, you know, looking at the links, you know, you got some big teams like Juventus, uh, like you said, Fiorentina, Feyenoord, PS, uh, PSV. So yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't really see it at the moment. Um, I think Juventus would be kind of a, a death sentence, so to speak. And maybe that's not the best. <laughs> best yeah, no. <laughs> it's, you know, a team that he's never going to break into at the moment. Um, and I hate to say that, but it's just, just the reality. Um, you know, Fiorentina, maybe there's a chance. I think they're mid to low table um, in, in Serie A this year. They're not having a great season. So uh, maybe there'd be an opportunity. Um, you know, I think the Italian style suits them to some of, uh, effect um, just because it's slower play. I think, um you know, like, like we said, he's not, he's not super, uh, athletic. So I think, you know, playing at a, a slower speed and kind of being more, uh, more of a passer, um, would suit his game in Italy. But, uh, you know, looking at the Dutch league, you know, you got, got someone like Alex Mendez who, who went there and is, is somewhat similar to John Luca Busio. Yeah. I think, it's, you know, he's not the greatest athlete, but he's a good passer of the ball, um, and, and has good technique, good skill with the ball. So, Maybe that's a good move, but but you know, like we said off camera too, you know, he'd he'd have to start with a, a young PSV or a young Fire in order. It wouldn't be in that first team because um, I really don't think he's even on the level of like a Richie Ledesma when he moved over. So, you know, I, I don't know. What do you think, Pat? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I couldn't agree. I'm kind of on the same lines. There's, uh, you know, he certainly. Um, I don't. I, I agree with you that he's not that Ledesma uh, type or kind of that level yet, but. Again, it's just a just such an interesting situation where, um, you know, these things are, are good and positive. But again, like you said about Juventus, quickly, I don't want it to turn into like an EPB Man City, um, forever right. and maybe Loney or maybe Azga Chelsea. But um, yeah, I'm. It would be interesting to kind of see him over in, in the Dutch league. I think uh, just in terms of the the coaching and and uh, some of the the youth development academy structure they have over there. 
I think that could be really beneficial to him. Um, maybe even there or um, some some uh, some teams like uh, in Belgium, I think, would be interesting that we've covered. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, we're not against him going abroad. Maybe we came out of the, the gate a little harsh, but uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, I think it would definitely give him um, opportun- more opportunity to improve, um, especially since he's not really starting for SKC right now. Um, you know, I think it would be a little bit different if that was the case. So, yeah, I, I think we've we've covered it pretty well now. So uh, with that being said, Pat, let's move over to Quick Kicks. All right, guys, it's that time of the show. I know you've all been waiting for. Us and I are very excited. It's none other than Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall, and that one is in. Josie Altidore from a long way out. The opening goal for the United States. All right, guys. To start off, we have some kind of unfortunate news. Um, the Ho Bros are kind of breaking up here. Um, you know, we've been, uh, I know, right? I know, Austin. It's uh, unfortunate times where um, you know they had that two-two draw against Lingby. Um, where they weren't able to pull off. They lost 4-3 overall in the aggregate um, and suffered relegation to the second tier. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough for the Hobros. Um, I guess uh, just with that that loss, uh, I'm sure Cappies will be looking elsewhere, most likely to move on this summer. Um, but I guess for Emmanuel Sabi, some greener pastures where, um, you know, he's moving on to um, Odense, a, a club that narrowly missed the Europa uh, league spot, but again, a, a team that's certainly up uh, in the in the Danish division there. Yeah, not the Hobros, man. What are we gonna do now? I know. <laughs> so unfortunate, but uh, yeah, moving on. Unfortunately, we go to uh, Germany, and we got to talk about Chris Richards. So Chris was just announced uh, that he's you know back in Germany and will be training with the first team and competing with them or at least be included in the squad for their champions league match against Chelsea. So not exactly sure how that's working out since, you know, squads were, I guess, reported or, or submitted earlier in the season, but um, it sounds like he will be a player that, that could feature. Um, there is some, some injuries to Chelsea or excuse me, Byron's back line with Benjamin Pavard going down um, mm. for a, a period of time. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see if Chris Richards actually, plays a part in that uh, that Champions League game. But good to see him kind of getting integrated with the first team, um, especially since, you know, there's no games going on right now. So I think that's a good thing. And, uh, yeah, quick, quick kicks today, Pat. But uh, we got to finish with our young ya. And our young ya of the day is Nico Carrera. So Nico is an 18-year-old center back, formerly of the uh, FC Dallas Academy, just made the move over to Germany and will be playing now for Holstein Kiel in the two Bundesliga. So, uh, you know, good move for Nico um, was a player that uh, was on the US U17 team, um, you know, last last fall. So uh, not the best tournament for them, but definitely a prospect that, uh, you know, is, is someone that that's worth looking out for um, Mexican-American. So, um, you know, did play in the past for, for Mexico in some camps, but, very, very strongly committed to the U.S. right now. So that's always great to see. And, uh, yeah, I think, Pat, it's a good move. You know, Holstein Kiel got promoted from the three Liga, I think, like three or four years ago now. Um, and they've kind of, you know, solidified their standing in the two Bundesliga. So I think, you know, he'll start out with their U19 team, um, which plays in one of the lower divisions of um, kind of the youth soccer there in, in Germany or youth football, so to right. speak. Foosball. And uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But, you know, good to see uh, Nico make the move and now we'll be able to cover him. So that's all for uh, that's all for our young y'all portion for today. So that's all for our episode today, guys. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel down below. And as always, don't forget to check out the social media. We're putting out great content with all the soccer going on like 24-7, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, it's nonstop right now, Austin. That's very true. And we also want to give a special thanks to uh, the guys at Posts and Pints for having us on last week. If you haven't checked out that episode, make sure you uh, check it out, and we'll put a link in the, the bio. But, uh, yeah, it was a great time with them and uh, a fun episode. Right, Pat? Yeah, I know. It was fantastic. Great guys. Uh, great conversation about soccer. It's always nice to kind of connect uh, in that community 
um, and really build up the, the U.S. soccer brand as a whole, um, talking about all these players that are kind of leading to one goal, Austin. That's very true. And that goal is one day we will win the World Cup. <laughs>